I recall getting up today at around 1.15 in the afternoon. At around 6 p.m., Mom and I went to the Knob. Where for my first drink, we went to the Knob for their last karaoke night. For my first drink, I basically just said, hey, give me something fruity. The internet connection was... A little slow. The mobile network on my phone. Yeah, but it was still fast enough that the internet worked fine. I was able to make an attempt at Looking up cocktail recipes in hopes of finding something other than a fuzzy navel cocktail, which is derived from orange juice, to have, which ended up being my second alcoholic drink, between which I recall having two glasses of water. With ice in it. Yeah, I for food. I got chicken fingers or tenders with onion rings because fries are derived from potatoes which is a starch these onion rings are derived from onions which I think is a sort of vegetable I got that maybe around 6, 15 p.m. At, at 9 p.m., I tried to get another order of the same thing at the knob to bring home for the, my dinner video, but their kitchen closed at 9 p.m. at the knob. And it was a, I think it was upon me learning that, maybe, that I decided to get the Fuzzy Naval cocktail, along with around the time I put in my third song, which was Willie Nelson's On the Road Again. Uh, the KJ 
which is presumably an abbreviation for karaoke jockey. Or at least that's my recollection of it. He said that he wouldn't be taking any more songs. Shortly after Mom and I put in our third song. So I recall we left sometime between 10, 15, and 10.30 p.m. The two earlier songs, the first one was Suddenly Seymour by Ashman Howard. I did that one first, even though I don't usually do that unless... I think I'm not going to get that many opportunities. Uh, to sing. Uh, which I believed because mom, since it was their last karaoke night, mom said uh, that it might be so packed that we'll only get to sing two songs max. I didn't want to sing Suddenly Seymour toward the very end after some of the people might have left, since people tend to enjoy me singing that one, since I... I do both the male and female part by myself. Uh, for the second song, I sang Still Loving You by the Scorpions. I figured that I would do, since it was the last karaoke night, I would do the familiar stuff because it's what I'm best at for now. Even though I only sang On the Road Again by Willie Nelson one other time where I've sang Suddenly Seymour and Still Loving You at least a dozen times in the past. All on different karaoke nights. There's an unwritten rule that each song is only supposed to be sung once during a karaoke night. I'm pretty sure you can still do it, but... It's generally not done. Our local Wegman seems to be open until midnight. Yeah, but Mom didn't want to drive past our house to go to our local Wegman since we went the other way in order to go to the knob. And then we also do that in order to go to the Will Inn, which is where we went to next. in order to get food for tonight. In this case, a chicken tenders slash fingers with onion rings. 
I believe uh, the bartender, he gave us... Uh, wing sauces. I at least heard something about it. About wing sauces. From him. Hmm. When we got to the well Inn. It was closer to 11 p.m. than not. And it wasn't a karaoke night at the Will Inn, so the place was nearly empty and was dimly lit in such a way that Mom said it seemed sketchy. The lighting and lack of people initially made me question if the place was even open, but it was. I just got another glass of water. Now the Willow Inn's cocktail game it generally isn't that great, or maybe it's just that I don't try hard enough to look for cocktail recipes. At the very least, they don't have a menu of cocktails to pick from. And that's the only thing I can conclude thus far. When I go to the Well Inn, there's a tendency for me to get some kind of fruit juice with some kind of liquor, generally speaking. Some kind of liquor mixed into the fruit juice. I worked on what will be the fourth Leprechaun Star Film drawing, both while at the Knob and then later briefly at the Well Inn while we waited for our food. Now this time, Mom and I both made sure to be careful with those iron doors and the door didn't hit my marker satchel and knock everything down. And I brought with me a few the very front row of the marker satchel, the one most towards me, closest to me, a few ultra-fine markers, sharpie markers that were different hues of purple. Because I think starting at 4 or 5 p.m. in the hours leading up to us going to the knob, I started work on the purple pigmen. Star foam drawing. on this little piece of styrofoam that I found 
on the fringes of this uh, plaza in which these townhomes are being constructed. It was on the very outskirts, the very perimeter of that construction site. Yeah, so I didn't go into the construction site to get that little piece of styrofoam. But because of how small the piece is, because I am using the different hues of purple, I'm planning on using the different hues of purple in order to represent sunlight on the purple pigment's body. The purple pigment is from a video game franchise known as Pigmen, in which you control the pigmen. And you use strategy to solve various puzzles. Around 1.30 in the afternoon, I had a cup of plain coffee. Well, which is something I'll have in some capacity. just about every day I don't have plain coffee for the caffeine I have it for the taste it's a I believe it's a habit I developed because I think I would have a I think I would get plain coffee at some point every single day, starting when I was in middle school. At first, I put sugar in it, I think, if I recall correctly, but then when it, that didn't seem to change the flavor much, I started having it plain. Excuse me, and I think that habit continued into high school. Not that there's any real need for uh, coffee, it's just enjoyable. I keep spending time trying to make rearrangements so I can fit more you know, more fields in this area, but <sighs> try as I might, I haven't quite been able to figure it out yet. I have a fairly good amount of confidence that even the highest level for Spring Grove will fit within this area, assuming the trend of each upgrade resulting in both its length and width 
in terms of tiles increasing by one. Uh, the other game I primarily play on desktop is Queen's Blade Limit Break. Uh, of which I've currently been swapping out uh, my active team for different beautiful warriors, as the game calls them. Uh, what you do first is collect Level 5 Beautiful Warriors, since they're the best. And therefore the only tier that makes sense. You use the lower levels for either Farewell or as rank up material. And my current team is Echidna, Aldra, Bawen, Elena, Elena, and Melfa. Melfa. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce the names. There you pick out the best. Level fives, or I mean five stars, that's what they actually are, five stars, you determine which ones are the best, from my experience, by what ones the game will charge you the most. Yeah, for certain things. If, for example, I would uh, deduce that The uh, Priestess of Blue Flame Sigil is a better beautiful warrior than who's currently in my team. The Priestess of Galnos Mephida because in the Oracle Shop, Melfina costs 35, Oracle Crest, while Sigil, Sigil costs 45. The same holds true for Swift Tracer. Elena or Elena, who I use to replace Ancient Princess Menace at some point I'm probably going to replace Charming Pirate Captain Luna I'm going to Use that pirate captain to replace Dragon Warrior Bronwen. And my team consists of three beautiful warriors with the break attribute and two beautiful warriors with the dual attribute.
you know, because you can get certain team bonuses depending on what attributes depending on what what your team attribute composition is in my case since my team has two dual warriors and three break warriors i get a total bonus effect of a 25% health bonus and an 18% attack bonus. There's also a plus 25% bonus to damage and a 20% bonus to hit. I don't believe that that changes though depending on what attributes your team members have, however. Oh, this wing sauce is probably buffalo. Yeah, the other one might be country sweet of some kind. In a sort of sense, while I was singing, I kind of got into the zone a little bit. And while I was singing, kind of felt like it had its own energy in a sort of sense. A feeling of being carried by the karaoke, which made me put in an effort, an extra effort into singing the lyrics according to how I remember those songs in a sort of way. Speaking of which, when Mom and I got home around 11, 11.15 p.m., I found my microphone. We didn't need it for the knob since the karaoke host provides microphones for singers yeah, but neither mom nor I could find it initially in either my room or the living room it was only after we got home that I noticed there was a bag on that S-shaped chair Though it's the size of a bed, but because it's not flat, it's not the best, at least for me, for sleeping. This chair is right next to the fireplace in our dining room. I noticed there was a white plastic bag. Because I wanted to clear, there was stuff on that chair and I wanted to clear it off. That's when I noticed. And it had a block of styrofoam in it and then some kind of cardboard box. Little cardboard box. And that's when, when I went to investigate, that's when I found... The microphone and I told mom as such that I had found my microphone for karaoke nights currently at the Will Inn. Since uh, they have a different karaoke host for the Will Inn than they do at the not than they did at the knob, but that'll be ending now.